Our brand new cycle of basic Spacelands is now available for purchase at www.itresolvesmtg.com. What's going on guys? Welcome to another gameplay video. I hope you guys are excited. I know we missed a couple days of gameplay. Uh, actually, Monday we did have some recorded. And then if you watched yesterday's video on the uh, ban and restricted announcement as well as the companion changes, you probably saw we talked about it, it was a Grixis list. Uh, it was a Fires of Invention list. Uh, and so unfortunately we figured, you know what? It's only legally played on Arena for like the next couple days, so there's really not a point in putting it up. Uh, and so we did miss a day, but uh, we are back, and we're 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 playing a little bit with Mono Green today. Uh, Mono Green is actually just a really solid archetype that I have kind of fallen in love with uh, in this standard environment. Uh, but in particular, we're featuring a list here with the Ozolith. So. Uh, we, we have played a few different mono green lists. None of them have had the Ozolith quite yet. So, uh, this is going to be a very counter heavy deck. Obviously, Yervo, Pelt Collector, Stone Coil Serpent, lots of stuff that are going to be able to get some counters. Even things like Bark Hide Troll, uh, have those counters. So, uh, looking at the one drop slot here, we do have the Ozolith as well as the Pelt Collector. Stone Coil Serpent here as a way to kind of have a scalable threat, uh, that is very good against multicolor cards. Uh, ram through instant target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control uh, the creature you control is trample excess damage is dealt to that creature's controller instead so this is kind of a way of fighting off the opponent's creatures which is really really crucial uh, bond of flourishing is a great way to be able to pull a permanent card from uh, the top three cards of our deck and also not only that but gain us a couple of life uh, which is really really crucial against a lot of the uh, mono red decks uh, Rakdos decks things like that uh, and so this not only can get us uh, a wealth of creatures but it can also get the ozolith it can also get vivian all kinds of good stuff uh, bark eyed troll is just a really nice kind of uh, pseudo hexproof threat but it also comes into play with that one one counter on it which again is very synergistic with the Ozolith. Uh, Yorvo, obviously kind of a, a huge, huge card in this deck. Uh, and the idea here is that it just gets tons and tons of counter. If it counters, excuse me, if it does die, put them on the Ozolith and hopefully move them over to uh, another creature. Uh, Crystalline Giant, uh, kind of an all-star in this list. Uh, it's a 3-3 three, three for 3. Um, uh, at, at the beginning of combat on your turn, you choose a kind of counter at random. Uh, that it already does not have. That could be Flying, First Strike, Death Touch, Hexproof, Lifelink, Menace, Reach, Trample, Vigilance, and a plus one, plus one counter. So lots of options. Uh, and then one of those is chosen at random that it doesn't have, and it's thrown onto it. So uh, the great thing to get is, in my opinion, getting something like Hexproof very, very quickly is amazing because uh, it just makes it very difficult to deal with. Uh, lead the Stampede here, another really, really good way uh, as well with the uh, Bond of Flourishing to pull out a creature card from our deck. Very, very useful for sure. Gem Razor uh, as just a two of here, but a fantastic card. Not only do we have some really good mutate targets just in the way of like Bark Eye Troll or uh, uh, Crystalline Giant, uh, but it can destroy target artifact or enchantment, which is really nice main deckable uh, tech uh, against a lot of lists right now. So very, very powerful. Questing Beast, kind of an obvious include, uh, just it, it has the ability to threaten Planeswalkers extraordinarily well, uh, and so this is really, really good. It also is just a very strong threat uh, to the opponent's life total. Uh, and then, of course, Vivian, Monster's Advocate, uh, which is, by the way, uh, not this was not actually planned, but this is our uh, Dark Frame Proxy uh, reward for this month, so if you're interested in picking that up, patreon.com slash it resolves. Uh, but... Uh, this is a really, really nice way to kind of dig through our deck, get a couple of extra creatures out there, uh, and if we can minus to her and get something good out, we can really do some damage. So lots of really, really good stuff. 23 forest, keeping it simple. We don't need too much uh, complexity here, and that's it. That's the list. It's a great mono green list, in my opinion, uh, though I have not yet play tested it. I've seen a good bit of a deck uh, of decks like this, uh, and I've really, really enjoyed the play pattern with these. Um, the Ozolith just gives a little bit of insurance. Now, uh, I don't know that we'll get to see it do its thing. Uh, sometimes it really either just beats face or it just doesn't get there. So we're going to do the best we can. Uh, I will be watching frame rates as we go through this, so I, I, if, if I can seed out kind of prematurely, it's solely because we're trying to avoid a frame rate issue. We don't want you guys to have to watch, you know, really shoddy gameplay. So, uh, let's see. Um, 
We do need a land here, but if we get a land, I think we're in amazing shape. I'm going to try this. It's a bit of an aggressive keep. Again, we're, we're, uh, we're one short on the standard number of lands, so it will be good to uh, hopefully pick one up. Oh, and there we go. Perfect. But we've got a nice one, two, three here that uh, I would love, love to get down very quickly. Uh, looks like Abzan, which does mean we're probably in for a, a bit of a rough game. Uh, they tend to have a good bit of removal and things like that, so let's go ahead and swing in. Uh, the good news is we are curving out very, very nicely here, so uh, we will have threats to spare. Another land is actually great as well. Uh, let's go ahead and play this out here. Just because it can get haste, it also buffs up the Pelt Collector. Uh, again, the play pattern of this deck is not very complicated. It's fairly straightforward, but uh, we do obviously want to make sure that we're, we're sticking threats as often as possible um, and hopefully not running too much into sweepers, things like that. Uh, that is good, not great, uh, is what I will say. We're just going to throw out this Bark Eye Troll, uh, and we're swinging with everything. Uh, and there we go, we got the Hexproof. That's fantastic. Ideally, we'd like to have like an Ozolith out on the field right now, uh, just so we can kind of get some of these counters onto it if something does die. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, this is a very, very powerful card, but there we go. That was about as quick and as efficient of a win as possible. Um, <laughs> All right, so there we go. That was a turn three or turn four or five win. Uh, pretty happy with that. Loving it. Absolutely loving it. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into game two. That was awesome. Uh, I hope you guys, um, if if you did not see our, uh, well, I will say my response because I don't want to speak for Will. Um, but if you did not see my response to the ban restricted list uh, updates as well as uh, the companion change. I do encourage you to go watch that again. We we put that up yesterday. Um, I think it's a really it, it's it's important to get different people's takes. Uh, understanding that it is a very opinionated kind of thing. I don't want anybody to feel like you know just because I say this thing that I feel like that's the only right thing. No, I'm I'm very open to um to a conversation about those kinds of things. Uh, but I, I do encourage you to watch that, see what you think, make your own informed opinion, and then, you know, of course, share that if you feel the need. Um, I'd certainly appreciate it. I know a lot of other people would as well. Um, obviously, this is an interesting time in Magic history. Uh, we've not seen a, a, a rules change to this extent uh, that uh, literally kind of rewrote cards. Um, that's a little bit different than anything else we've been used to. So uh definitely something worth talking about in my opinion um and so if you do have thoughts on that please feel free share them again we'd we'd be happy to look into uh different opinions there but i i find it really really interesting the way that they did that um i mean i i don't know uh, to me uh what we run into and the, what the issue has been at least for the last year or so anyway is that you know they've clearly been pushing cards oko things like that have been hugely hugely pushed and i think the issue that we get is is it uh interesting we didn't get any other creatures but that's okay um the the issue is that you know this very it, it puts a very unsettling light on a lot of things and i think that that's very uh interesting is all i can say um let's do this first um, this may be incorrect. We might run into a counter here as well. Yeah. Um, interesting. So this is an instant only list. Interesting. How in the world it's instant only. And then they have Umori as the finisher. Yeah. I'm honestly going to attack here. If they've got instance, they've got plenty of removal. Uh, so I'm going to I'm gonna do this. If they wanted to trade off, they could, but I, I would not have assumed that they would. Um, so yeah, it's just a very unsettling time in Magic's history, I think, where um, you know we're not being instilled with a whole lot of confidence. Um, I certainly hope that that changes, and I certainly hope that Wizards you know, does their best to, to make that possible, but... Uh, it is a little tricky. Um, it's it's a bit of an odd time. Very unprecedented. Um, 
And uh, as far as the bands go, I think the bands are probably correct, but um, just weird. Just a very odd time. Um, we have to kind of go for at least five, don't we? And in that case, it's worth it to go... Oh, wait, do we only add five? Yeah. No, we have six, but that's okay. Is, I assume, going to get countered. Uh, Should have gone six. I just miscounted. <coughs> oh. Okay, maybe not going to get countered. Uh, well, at the very least, you know, this blocks this. It is very nice to get around multicolored cards as well. <sighs> See what they want to do. This is a kind of interesting list. I've not seen a Omori instant deck like this before. Um, and worth noting that a deck like this probably isn't going to work very well um, post, post uh, companion change. But... Hey, maybe it does. I don't know. Um, the companion change does have to be activated as a sorcery speed. So uh, what that means is you can't just, you know, instant speed, bring this out from the sideboard. You you do have to, to kind of wait. Um, let's try this first. Let's just see what they do. Actually, it might have been better to Jim Razor first. I'm not sure. No, I think this was correct. That's fine. Uh, I mean, obviously, don't love that, but that's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and throw this out there. Whoops. Uh, we're going to just throw this out as a 4-4 on its own. Um, diversify threats just a bit. Uh, and see what happens. Okay. Man, this is just counters galore, is it not? All right. This is a this is very strange deck building. Um, not bad deck building, just very strange. Uh, not used to seeing something like this. Um, also wanted to talk a little bit about the bands because I actually am in fairly decent support of the bands themselves. Um, Fires of Invention. Look, guys, clearly, you know, you can love that card. I love playing with that card, but the reality is it was taken over uh, pretty heavily. And so I do think that it's worth m mentioning that I, I think that that was a correct ban. Agent of Treachery, also a very difficult card to come back from. Uh, so after your opponent has played it, it's very difficult to really get somewhere with that card uh, out on the battlefield. So again, I'm kind of in support of that. I do understand that... Oh, really? I do understand that, you know, their Agent of Treachery in particular is just going to get, uh, you know, rotated out very soon, but I think it's the correct thing to go ahead and ban that. Um, and I think that, you know, there are cards like like Luka or cards like Winota that are still trying to cheat out creatures uh, that are still going to be fun but not be quite as oppressive. Um, we'll certainly see in the near future, but... I think, you know, cards like Winota not getting Agent, but still getting something powerful is fine. Uh, there are plenty of other good humans out there, um, and we'll see. We're going to lose this deck. Um, and we'll see, you know, how that actually turns out. But, uh, I mean, my assumption is that there are plenty of other options. Uh, whether or not they're amazing options, we'll see. But, um, all right, well, we got a giant Stone Coil Serpent. Um We'll see if we can get there. Um, it does have Trample, which is kind of nice. Uh, but anyway, so I, I think that those were the correct cards to ban. Um, albeit very uh, in a very tricky environment where we probably shouldn't have... We, we Again, standard bans are so rough uh, on the environment. Uh, and here we just lose. So um, They're so rough uh, because the reality is... You never want to have to ban something in standard. Like, in, in other formats, I get it. Um, you know, mostly because there's a bigger card pool out there. You can play test all day. You can design all day. But the reality is you're going to run into little synergies, little things that pop up that you just didn't think of. And I, I understand that. I think you do have to be somewhat, uh, somewhat lenient in that area because, you know, there's a lot of cards out there. Um, but I, I think the reality is, you know, in a standard environment, that's a very limited card pool. Uh, granted, it's still a lot of cards, but it's not anywhere close 
to modern or even historic, but uh, just lots of different things. And so I find that um, standard bands are a little bit, I guess, out of place. They feel a little bit strange. I don't like that we've had to ban so many things. I think that is so wrong right now. Um, and again, it just it just makes it difficult to 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 build that trust uh, in in that confidence. Um, excuse me. Okay. Uh, do, do, do. I was actually looking. Uh, okay, so uh, one uh, a person uh, outlaw Pete. Um, for the record, I I wanted to address your comments in particular. Um, so Outlaw Pete, uh, first of all, thank you for commenting on the uh, companion video and all that, uh, the reaction kind of video. I uh, really do appreciate it. I just want to mention that uh, Outlaw Pete's been a really nice supporter of the stream and everything like that. He's been um, jumping on the stream when we do have it, but also commenting on videos, hanging out in Discord. Certainly appreciate that. If you're interested in jumping on the Discord or anything, you the, the link's in the description. You're, you're more than welcome to. Uh, but Outlaw Pete just asked, uh, and this is kind of more of a general question, but so I'm wondering if, if modern format includes standard format anyway, uh, why is Fires an agent banned in standard but not modern? Uh, can people not just label their decks as modern and still use it? Technically, technically yes. Uh, you could very easily um, just say, hey, my standard deck is now a modern deck, and yes, that does work. Um, however, uh, what what generally is the case is that um, standard decks are not powerful enough to really make it in modern uh, because modern is such a uh, such a faster format. Um, usually, uh, the assumption is that modern is very much a turn four format, uh, and so if you're not either winning substantially or planning to win on turn four, you're probably a bit slow, uh, and you know that's just how it is now. Uh, what I will say, um, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this out there. This attacks on a different level and obviously they've got sweepers. So let's, um, let's take advantage of this. Uh, I'm just going to give vigilance. Um, so first of all, yes, you are technically correct, but standard decks generally not powerful enough in, in those lists. Um, now as far as, uh, Agent as well as uh, fires not being banned in modern, they're not good enough, uh, in my opinion, to really need to be banned in either of those or in modern. Um, Agent is very very good, but it's a little bit of a late play uh, in modern. Um, and fires of invention again a turn four play, uh, and we do have to be conscious. You know, if you're if you're playing something on turn four, you're probably hoping to win with it on turn four, uh, and so. It's just, it's a different format. It's a different world. It's a little bit faster. I do want to thank you though for the, uh, for the question in the comments because uh, I thought that was a good one to at least address. Um, but yeah, so just a, just a different world. That's all. Uh, let's go ahead and plus up here. Technically we should wait because uh, they could shatter. Um, but we're going to do this. This just boosts up. All right. Um, Let's attack first. If they do have a, another shatter, I'd like them to use it now. Good. Uh, let's actually bond of flourishing. Again, we've got the power on the field to, to really deal with what they're doing. Okay, that's fine. Uh, that's not great for us, but that's kind of fine. Um, I'm gonna pass. Uh, I don't want to overcommit in a in a situation like this um, because we've got more than enough power to deal with anything that they do. So, for instance, if they single target, ooh, okay, well, that does change things a little bit. Um, gonna sacrifice that and that for obvious reasons. Uh, that changes things a bit. Um, okay, I assume they just take the giant. I think that makes the most sense. Um, interesting. Bark Hydral. Okay. Sure. I mean, that's fine by me. Um, uh, 
I wish we could pump this up just one more time, then we would be in amazing shape. Uh, but unfortunately, we will not be. Uh, let's do this. Let's just get them down to one here. And again, we're going to hold off on the giant um, solely because obviously they can't make a sack two creatures this turn, but they can bring one in. Okay, that's fine. Um, this gives us the option of, you know, they put a 2-2 two -two out, we ram through it, and then we um, we attack in. So I think that that's the correct play. Ooh, that also very much helps. Uh, let's try and play this first. We can do both, so that's fine. Uh, okay. Let's do this, and let's do this. Uh, this does mean we will not be able to kill them this turn because they are gaining three, um, which is a bit unfortunate, but we're going to give Trample to this one. I call and Let's go ahead and just get rid of Lily. I think that's correct now, um, just because they could minus four Lily and make it very, very difficult for us to, to attack in. Okay. Another lily. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Solid. Goodness. 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 Okay. Um, let's giant. Uh, let's do this. We got hexproof, um, which doesn't technically get around this, but it does help a little. Uh, yes. We're gonna wait till the end of their turn and ram through uh, this. They can't target, thankfully. Uh, we're waiting till the end of the turn because they draw a card off of this. So if they do get uh, a sorcery speed spell or something along those lines, we don't want them to have that option. <clears throat> uh, let's try it now though. Uh, just so we have as much mana as possible on our turn. Okay. That's fine. It's not great, but that's fine. What did we get? Death touch. Um, I mean, we're just going to attack them, but they are going to gonna just block here. Um, and again, we're going to we're going to go for trample here. We need to get some damage through. They are they're holding off our forces very well. I don't think we've done anything too incorrect so far. Um, but it certainly is making it difficult. The fact that they're gaining so much life as well is very frustrating. Now, next turn if we do get uh, really any creature, we can minus 2 Vivian and hopefully get a little extra value. Um, but we're in a tricky spot, no doubt. Oh, goodness. Oh, okay. That helps. Again, I always forget that we can do this with Vivian. Um, let's do that. Get that out. Uh, flying is very good. We're going to peg Liliana down because, again, we really can't afford uh, to let her sacrifice two more creatures here. Um Next turn, we've got a much bigger attack coming. Uh, that's fine. I mean, it's not good, but it's fine. Um, lead the Stampede's going to be helpful for sure. This has definitely turned into a very good game, no doubt. Um, okay. Sure. Please don't kill Vivian. <laughs> We just don't want them to kill Vivian. That would be bad. Uh, that would be very, very bad. They can get in for four, but it doesn't look like they plan to. Um, hmm. I'm going to do this. Just make sure. Okay, so let's get Barkhide Troll here. Uh, we're going to lead the Stampede. Oh, that's kind of nice. And we'll get both of these here. All right. 
Uh, we can play this out. I don't actually know that we do. I think we can play this one out for two if we would like. Uh, it's not super strong, but it is a creature, uh, and we need to get some of these out. So what do we get this time? Trample. Well, Trample's not the greatest. Uh, let's get Liliana off the board here. Um, if we can deal with the Planeswalkers, I feel much better about our position. Now, if they just have another Liliana, that's really bad. Um, but we'll see. Okay, they gave it up. We did it. We got there, guys. Uh, man, that was I was a little worried about that, uh, but we got there. So fantastic. Uh, really loving this deck. We got three wins with this deck. Um, or no, did we lose the second game? I don't remember. We did well with this deck. <laughs> uh, oh, we have a pack. Let's go ahead and open our pack. Um, so far, I'm loving this deck. We didn't really get to see Ozolith do its thing. Yes, we did lose game two. Excuse me. Uh, oh, nice. We didn't really get to see Ozolith do too much. Uh, game two, surprisingly, we did see it, you know, pump up our uh, our Stone Coil Serpent there, but just wasn't enough, unfortunately. Uh, we can see the power level of Vivian, though. Vivian very very good i am very excited to be playing another uh three games with this deck i think it's really really sweet i will see you guys very soon for that and again please do make sure to check out that companion uh and ban restricted video uh just to see you know check out our opinion on things um feel free again to to share your own uh, i just think this is such an interesting time in magic's history that i do think there's a lot worth talking about uh, also, just want to say, somebody uh, in our Discord mentioned it wouldn't be a bad idea to to do kind of a weekly um, talking head style video uh, similar to that one. I think that's something we can consider. We we did that a while back. It was called the Weekly Ramble series. Uh, we may bring that back soon. Uh, don't know 100%, but uh, feel free to, if, if that's something that you're interested in seeing, feel free to let me know in the comment section and Maybe we'll get that going next week. So thanks a lot, guys. I really do appreciate you watching, and I will see you very, very soon with part two of this Ozolith mono green list. Thanks for watching.